Welcome to the Deeper Dive Podcast, brought to you by the OC Church of Christ. The Deeper Dive Podcast is about going deeper into God's Word, learning new insight, and taking a fresh look at the verses that impact our daily lives. Today's episode is the second and final lesson from our series, Understanding the Spiritual Realm with Brian Craig. Get your scuba gear and let's dive deep into God's Word. Here's Brian Craig. Okay, this is part two of class called Understanding the Spiritual Realm. So if you haven't heard that, you might want to go back and listen to that first. We're just picking up where we left off. And again, we're not not ever going to understand the spiritual realm, but it's just the idea of opening our eyes to really, it's a biblical worldview of the heavens and earth um, cosmology and heavens, the heavens being populated with spiritual beings and which is what we see in scripture even as i mentioned last time in the story of the birth narrative we all know the christmas story where the suddenly heaven is opened up and the sky is full of all these spiritual beings the host of heaven it says which are we it usually gets pictured as angels but strictly speaking angel the word angel is just messenger so an, an angel is a messenger from god but what the skies, the spiritual beings are, or, or Elohim, it's any, it's a, it's like us in a way that we, these are created beings that are part of God's creation, but they are, in the Psalm says, what is man that you're mindful of him? You made him a little lower than the Elohim, the ones in the heavens. So we have a special, yet yeah, you crowned him with glory and honor. So we, as human beings, we have this special role uh, to play. That God's doing something, and the angels are part of it, or the, the spiritual beings, the Elohim, are part of it, and we, as humans, are part of that. And so, God Himself becoming a human—that's the story of Jesus. That's why we worship that He came so low, and so God lifted Him up. But that. That that the big picture story is what we're talking about of something going on in the heavens above and the earth below, and that's from the the beginning chapters of Genesis all the way to Revelation. All, the whole Bible is, is the story of there being what we do in this life matters in the heavenly realm, and so I want to zoom in on on one particular character here. We as I mentioned last time, we would pick up with that. Daniel, Daniel chapter 4. Daniel is an interesting book. There's a scholarly debate about when it was written. I won't get into that, but he's just, Daniel is a model. I think he was a historical person, but the final touches on the book were based on the language because it contains language that's much later language. It was a work in progress, maybe. I don't know exactly. Again, I'm not going to get into the construction of the documentary hypothesis of about the book of Daniel. But as a character, as a person, I believe a historic figure, but as a person, Daniel is really the where we start to see fully formed understanding. As you're going through the Torah, you see more and more of the heavenly realm and it, it, more and more is revealed. And by the time we get to Daniel, that Daniel is the first place we really see even resurrection mentioned and the idea of the, the it says at the end that the holy ones will will rise and even the final judgment and stuff all that's in daniel and daniel daniel is key to understanding jesus because jesus steps into this image that, that daniel gives us of the son of man who is approaches the ancient of days the creator of the universe this figure the son of man is given power and he's he's made the ruler of all creation and that's that that's the the text that makes the when Jesus mentions that when he's on trial that's what makes the, the Sanhedrin so mad that we're, the the people who are, are are holding in this court that's asking him to account for what he's doing and when he says you will see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven he's talking about Daniel the book of Daniel, that's a Daniel 7 reference. Anyway, Daniel is, it's an interesting book. It's a, it's a, I love the book of Daniel because his, the, he's, he is, you see him faithful through incredible times of transition. He is there. He's one of the, he and his friends are, are 
brought captive when Babylon first conquers. But then he's there for this whole regime change as the Medo-Persians take over this whole other empire. And he still was, and then he's still in, in a position of leadership or a position of responsibility. And so he's a great example of how we should be on the job, of how we should be in our community, of how we should be and the way he takes his goes to God with these his daily daily devotions and his prayer and anyway I just love Daniel as, a, as an example. There's nothing really negative about Daniel in the Bible, whereas almost everybody else we all blow it. But Daniel is just he's a special guy, and there's stuff that he sees or writes about that even is I think finds final fulfillment even in 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 the um, the. Greek Empire and of the, some of these things that happen in the so after the after these different empires you see some of these things fulfilled even or even in the Roman Empire I think you see some of that Daniel you could read John Oak's book on Daniel if you want to get more into that but for what we're talking about here today we're talking about spiritual realm and Daniel gives us a little bit of a window into how does the spiritual realm and the, the down here, how does up there and down here work together? And Daniel 4, 7, where the King Nebuchadnezzar is given, something, something happens to him that's really dramatic. But it says, this sentence is by decree of the watchers, the decision by the command of the holy ones, in order that the living will know that the Most High is sovereign over the kingdom of humankind and to whomever he wills and gives it, he even sets the humblest of men over it. So the holy ones, this is again, the Elohim, the host of heaven. This, uh, there's some connection between that and the stars, the, the heavenly host. Even the, this word, the watchers, that, that's captured the imagination, especially of, of a lot of the Jew, Jewish literature in the, the time in between the Testaments. There, there's a lot about the watchers and they got really into angels and these heavenly beings and trying to f figure it out. So there's a lot in Jewish literature that's swirling around by the time of Jesus, that Jesus steps into and gives us an, an understanding of it. But this verse here in, in Daniel 4, 17, it says that this, these, the watchers are involved in this decision. It's, it's by command of the Holy Ones. So it's telling us that these spiritual beings are involved sometimes in what happens on earth. And God is doing things, but he involves his divine counsel. He, he involves these other beings sometimes in what he's doing. And so he, uh, he, I love what he even says about he's sovereign over the kingdoms of, of humankind and whoever he wills, he gives it. He even sets the humblest of men over it. That's who God is. God is looking for the humble. God is looking for those who tremble at his word, uh, right? Who, um, act justly, walk humbly, and, and love justice, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. That's who God is looking for. And Daniel 9, Daniel is talking about some of the visions that he has, these heavenly visions where it's an apocalypse. Apocalypse means a revealing. Apocalypse doesn't mean the end of the world. It means um, pulling back the curtain or it means revealing. And so Daniel has these apocalyptic moments or these dreams where he heaven is open or the curtain is pulled back or he's able to understand more of what's really going on and that's the idea of apocalyptic literature or an apocalyptic dream or experience is to be to see reality and so he, in daniel 9 he says while i was still praying daniel 9 21 through 23 while i was still praying the man gabriel he calls him a man, interesting, but he's a messenger, he's an angel, and angels always in the Bible always just appear as humans, maybe glowing humans, but they're never a cherub or a, a, we, we have, that comes up in the Middle Ages with wings and stuff. That's not in the Bible. There's never an example of angel with wings. But anyway, get back on track here. <laughs> the man Gabriel, whom I had seen before in a dream, flew to me in a hurry at about the time when the evening gift is given in worship. He talked to me and told me things, saying, O oh, Daniel, I have now come to give you wisdom and understanding. As soon as you began to pray, an answer was given, which I have come to tell you, for you are loved very much. So listen to what I say and understand the special dream. 
This is such a cool story, such an amazing text, because it tells us that um, God and his heavenly hosts are involved in what's happening in our lives. And even just how our worship, we obviously we know that's why we worship. That's why we gather on the first day of the week and break bread together and share communion. It It, it is a, a heavenly these are heavenly activities, the sacraments of baptism and communion. And it's not really a thing in our tradition to use that word sacraments, but it's sacrament just is something happening in a physical that has a spiritual reality. We all practice that with baptism. We believe that it's not just removal of dirt from the body. It's a pledge of a good conscience towards God. When you are baptized, there's something spiritual going on. There's a spiritual reality. And so that's what we're talking about. With sacramentalism, that's what we're talking about with with the heaven and earth thing. Is that there there are things that happen on earth that have heavenly re- realities. And so Daniel, as Daniel is praying, it says, "I love that." He says, "As soon as you begin to pray, an answer was given, which I have come to tell you, for you are loved very much." That this gives us meaning to pr- our prayer, like our worship, our. T- times of silence and solitude and just being with God and bringing to God our petitions, bringing to God our struggles, like heaven sees and knows. And these even these other spiritual beings are involved in it. And this is something I have personal experience with, and I, it's hard for me to put language to it. And I'm not sure even how much I'm to share, but I, you, when I had, I at the end of 2022, I fell very ill over the holiday right at the very end of the year and I was totally incoherent. I had to be rushed to the ER and it it turns out I had a a brain tumor and so I had to be flown back from, I was in Colorado on vacation. I had to fly back home and have surgery as quickly as possible. I had to go to the straight to the ER and have surgery and have this sizable tumor removed and, and then I've been on a road to recovery ever since and, but in that that was a very profound thing to to have brain surgery and to also almost really be, I should have died. Like I would have died if it hadn't been for modern medicine. And so I had this experience of kind of crossing over, not crossing over, like I didn't see a, a light or I wasn't going through a tunnel or some of these near-death experiences some people have. But what I did have was some experiences, more than one, several of of being very aware of the spiritual realm. And I, I had an incredible peace like I have ne- had never had before or never haven't even had since. A profound experience of God's love, of his, uh, of trust in Him, of everything is okay. I, I definitely experienced Jesus and that He is Lord. There is no, no other, nothing on earth that compare at all uh, to his authority and his power. So even the things we are afraid of or, or these, it's in the gospels where anytime Jesus encounters a demon, we're afraid of things like that, a demon, or you think about horror movies and stuff. But think about the demons that Jesus encounters, people who are possessed. The demons are just terrified, right? They're just, and, and they're, anyway, they're just... Jesus is, and he's was hidden in a way like he became low. He became a just a, a servant. He became a humble person. He came to earth as he, he's confronting the beast. He's confronting the Roman Empire. He's confronting the principalities and the powers. But he's this humble teacher from a small kick town. And, and anyway, I experienced not the humble g this is again in in my kind of near death experiences not the but not the humble jesus but the he's always humble but the transcendent like the cosmic jesus he is the king of kings he is the lord of lords he is the all the universe will know right now you don't see everything subject to him like it says in hebrews right now we don't see everything subject to him because we're in this in-between time where the kingdom of God has come, but it's he's not ruling and reigning over all creation yet. So there's still, and the last enemy to fall is death itself, right? As we know from the book of Revelation. So we're in this waiting period. We're in this, we're seeing 
things play out on a global scale. And so this involves politics. This involves suffering in the world. This involves a lot that's going on in the world. So what's going on in the world, God is very involved is what I'm trying to say. And I don't want to presume to say, and I think there's a lot of kind of junk literature about this taking Revelation or taking Daniel or, and, and trying to, to, to do a one-for-one -one correspondence to things that are happening right now in Israel or right now in Palestine. Or, and I caution that because it's more of typology. It's more of, it, it happens again and again. It's a story that happens again and again of worldly powers versus Jesus and his way, the humble, like it talks about in this passage in Daniel 4 we just read where he sets the humblest of men God gives his uh, God gives responsibility to the humblest of men and so that's what I want to be I want to be like Daniel I want to be like these devout people who we we're, I just want to be humble and I just want to trust God and I want to trust his plan and I'm just here to serve so that's how I'm even trying to approach my life right now with a lot of uncertainty when it comes to my having a terminal diagnosis and not knowing how much time I have. And it, it's just, I just want to be humble. I just want to be available. I just want to, I want to be like Daniel. I love this. It, it makes me emotional. Just this, that God, this, what, he, what is told to him. As soon as you begin to pray, an answer was given, which I've come to tell you. For you are loved very much. That's, all I want to hear from God, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I feel that from God. I feel that from God and I feel that from his people and all the ways that people are praying for me and, and people tell me they pray for me every day, all the time. And I, I just, whoever you are listening to this, I, I want you to trust that love and to give up whatever else <laughs> is dist distracting you or, or detracting from that love of God, because that's what we're here for. So uh, the next chapter, Daniel 10, I just, this is very similar, but continuing on this spiritual realm idea on earth as it is in heaven, there's this kind of parallel thing. Daniel 10, he continued, do not be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were hit, heard, and I've come in response to them. So, the minute Daniel was, and what Daniel was doing, if you don't remember, is he's humbling himself, he's praying, he's confessing his, he says, I was confessing my sins and the sins of my people. So he's confessing things that he didn't even do, but he feels like he's complicit. And so this is something I try to practice. And, uh, as an American, as a part of the ICOC, as a white person, as any way that I can confess sins, people like, look like me or people in this organizational structure I'm a part of in, in my church or people as Americans, it just are my, what my country has done or whatever. I'm complicit with all kinds of stuff that I don't even know of. And so I confess those then to God saying, God, I, I wanna be a part of what you're doing. And that's what Daniel was doing. He's humbling himself. He's, he's, he's just, he's taking responsibility even, maybe he didn't even deserve to, but it says when you did that, I've come, this angel is sent to, to respond, this messenger. But he says, the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the king of Persia. So I've come, now I've come to explain to you what will happen to your people in the future for the vision concerns a time yet to come. So what this teaches us is that, again, heaven is super involved in things that are happening here. And me or you as a devout worshiper of Yahweh, as a devout person with our prayers, we are engaging in the spiritual battle. We are a part of this cosmic struggle and it's, and it's not over yet. We're in the midst of it. We're in the midst of a big spiritual battle that rages all over the world and, and faithful people of God are are involved and these different heavenly beings these heavenly messengers in this text that they are michael comes to help uh, this gabriel who's talking michael comes to help but the prince of persian kingdom resisted me so what does that mean and, and i can't get too into this but there are spiritual beings that represent earthly kingdoms as well there are on the other side there are 
our, our beastly kingdoms, Daniel's vision shows him. So there, there are, just as there are, there are heavenly beings that represent God's way, there are beastly representatives. And so, it, again, I, the point is we're part of a big cosmic struggle. And th- this just brings up this idea, and I, I like how the, the song in the Barbie movie that came out this last year, What Was I Made For, is the song. What does all this mean? Why am I here? How do I fit into this? What was I made for? The Bible is a story that answers that question, that God made us to participate with him in bringing about the new creation. He made us to co-rule creation with him, even though we lack the wisdom for it, is working on us and refining us and making us useful to him to bring about his purposes. And so that's why we pray. I pray the Lord's Prayer every day on earth as it is in heaven. May your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. With my health, with my church, with my country, with all the countries of the world, I believe that we're part of something that's bigger. That Ephesians 6 says, we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against the rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, against evil spirits in the heavenly places, Ephesians six twelve. I want you to know that who you are, that you are meant to co-rule. We are in the world, but not of it. But we are, we have a plan. We're part of a plan that is eternal. Paul told the Roman believers, they're predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So he should be the firstborn among many brothers. He told the Corinthian church, we all with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from one degree to another, that our humanity would be transformed. For this perishable body must put on the imperishable. This mortal body must put on immortality, 1 Corinthians 5, 15. So we are, we are meant to join in this divine rule. We are meant to join, again, like in Psalm 8, where it, it, it's, we're made a little he- lower than the humans, were made a little lower than the heavenly beings. But then we're meant to be elevated and to co-rule creation. I don't even like thinking about that. I don't want any, I'm not asking for more responsibility. I don't want to, like Jesus tells his followers, don't you know you're going to judge the nations? I don't, I feel so un, unqualified to, to join God in ruling his creation. I just want to make it. <laughs> I just want to, but, but I'm here. I'm available, God, however you want to use me. That's why I'm here is to serve and to worship. But, but if you're watching this or listening to this teaching here, I, I just want you to know that you belong to God. God made you for a purpose, and He wants you to participate in the divine nature, 2 Peter 1, 4. He wants you to be like Him, 1 John 3, 2. And secondly, know whose you are. Know who you are and know whose you are, that we belong to God. 1 John 3, 1 says, see what kind of love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and this is who we are. God has created us for an eternal purpose. And I like how Paul puts it beautifully in Romans 8, verse 18 through 23. I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. Not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as Son, the redemption of our bodies. You know, we belong to God, and so we're part of this future that He's creating even now with His people on this planet. And that's why we worship. That's what we long for. It's what unites us with each other. And it's what unites us with those who've gone before us and those who will follow us until we're all together in future glory. I want to close with a song that's inspired by these thoughts called This Holy Battle. And again, I, I've shared a lot, but it just helps me to think about the struggles I'm facing every day, that I'm a part of something that's cosmic and that is worth fighting. I'll close with this. from the grave 
he gave us his name and the great commission the battle's been won the chains are undone and we have a mission you gave your own son to show the depths of your love Now we can overcome Because we know what you've done This holy battle's won There's no greater fight You show us your light in a world that's divided The battle for souls Love making us whole In Jesus united You gave your own son To show the depths of your love Now we can overcome because we know what you've done The soul that battles won Let love conquer fear Keep drawing us near So we can be like you Spirit will guide, your power ignite as we speak your whole truth. Oh, you gave your own son to show the depths of your love. Now we can overcome because we know what you. Solid battles won. You gave your only son to show the depths of your love. Now we can overcome because we know what you've done. The solid battles won. And the solid battles won. The soul it battles one. Amen. Thank you, Brian, for this great series. And thanks for listening to Deeper Dive by the OC Church of Christ. If you want to keep up to date with Brian, you can follow his blog. We have the link in the show notes. If you want to get connected to us or want to donate to the program, go to our website, occhurchofchrist.com or on social media at the OC Church. Join us next time for our next Deeper Dive. Oh,